Hey, how's it going, everyone? So, hey, just so you know, you know, I appreciate everybody that's supporting my channels, everybody that's subscribing. Um, I really do appreciate it. I see all the comments, and I used to be able to answer people, you know, when you left a comment, because, you know, I was, you know, maybe getting three or four a day. I'm getting hundreds of them a day now. So, it's, like, I see them, I can't answer every single one, and I apologize for it. It's just, it's, maybe once I step up and do the couple of things that, uh, I have in the works that I have planned, I can have somebody else assisting me and then I could start answering, you know, more questions and stuff like that. But it's, it's, I, it's overwhelming. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm, and I'm shocked. I just, you know, the, the channel's blowing up and because of you guys, and I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. I wasn't expecting it, to be honest with you. So, but anyway, so what am I working on now? Well, I got this Toyota RAV4. Honestly, I don't even know the year. They just told me to pull it in. And I'm going to be doing front complete struts, front pads, and rotors. So here it is, right here. And what year is this thing? It's a 2011. Uh, it's a V6. You don't see too many of these with a V6. At least I don't see them. Maybe you see them elsewhere, but I don't see them here. So let's get started with this. We're going to put it up in the air, take the wheels off, and go from there. So we're going to do the struts first. And as you see, I got the wheel off. What you're going to do is you got to take... The sway bar end link off right here now usually what i will do is i'll take a whiz wheel and i'll cut the head of the uh bolt off the head of the threaded part off you know down flush to the nut it doesn't hurt the integrity of the, the piece now here's the thing the end of this has an allen key that you can use and then you have to wrench it the whole way and hold it with the allen key it's kind of a pain but you can do it if you cut the end off you're going to lose that allen key so i'm going to imagine you know guys doing this in their driveway or whatever you're gonna to wanna to leave that in place. But like I said, if it doesn't have that, just because not every one of them has that, just slice the threads off if you can. You can use the Sawzall, whatever. If not, do yourself a favor, pick one of these up. Make sure it's the yellow bottle, it's map gas. This thing gets extremely hot. It's, it's much hotter than the regular blue propane bottles. This is a lot hotter. You can actually cherry that thing. Now, what you also got to remember on something like this, the strut, you got to be mindful of it. You don't want to heat the strut up. You're going to get some heat in it. You don't want to go crazy and get a lot of heat into it. Also, on the back side, you got a boot here. So you want to be careful so you don't burn that. So there's a lot of things you got to keep in mind when doing something like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably grab the back side of this on this edge, on this ledge here, with a pair of ice grips. I'm going to spray this up and then I'm going to hit it with my gun. At home, you could probably do it with a with your hand ratchet or whatever. But also, if you take a wire brush, clean the threads out. Even if you have one of those small toothbrush style wire brushes, which you can pick that stuff up at Home Depot or Lowe's or any hardware store, just clean the threads out. It'll make your life much easier. All right, so I just want to show you something like this with one of these small wire brushes. Just clean the threads out because why do you want to have the nut digging in and going through the threads when it has dirt and debris? Now spray it up and go from there. So there you see, I got a pair of needle nose vice grips on there. And now we're just gonna break it free like this. But the needle nose vice grips, see how they're moving? It'll hold it. You may have to hold it back, but there, it's working just fine. So we're only gonna do one side at a time. Now I know you guys up north would be struggling with this even more. So up north, if you're doing this, you may wanna actually get new sway bar end links and then just chop these things off completely, make your life that much easier. Usually when I was up in New York, I would sell these with sway bar end links just included in the price because of the nightmare of getting everything off. Now if you see, if you look close, I have it grabbed on the edge and these are new vice grips too. So that's the other thing too, brand new vice grips really make a big difference. But you see how I grabbed the outer edge? Now, some of them, you got to look. Not these Toyotas, though. That's a round sh uh, shoulder. But some of them actually have where you could put a wrench on there. It actually has a hex built into it. So, now that's out of the way, we're going to go ahead. We're going to take all the other stuff out that we need to get out. The two main bolts here and the hardware over there. Usually, at this point, I'm going to drop. I should have done it first, actually. Is take the... Three retaining bolts out that are up top. So let's let it down. Let's do that. Now the nut that's tucked in underneath the cowl, I already broke it free with a big wrench there. You don't want to break them free with a gear wrench. 
something use the gear wrench to loosen it up and get it out of there. Some cars you got to take the cowl out to get to these bolts on this. Luckily, you don't have to. And I always put the nuts close to where I'm at. And the other one here, I'm going to have to use a swivel. Break that free, take it off. I can use the same swivel getting the last one out, which you can't see that's tucked inside there. Saw, I don't know if you could see it actually. See how the threads are going down on those? That's because the whole assembly is starting to drop. Which that's fine. But this is the way I usually disassemble them first. But then going back together, that's usually the first one, first end I put back together. It's just easier to maneuver it and catch that end first. All right, so let's move on to the bottom. All right, so now the next step is you want to undo where the brake lines, ABS lines go. Here you have a clip into the strut itself. So basically you're just going to undo these. These are 14s. So far the so our end link was a 17, this, the top bolts were 14s. So just like that, take it out, get it out of the way. Take this one out, get it out of the way. And the reason I take this off is so I don't hook the strut into it, because now this actually attaches to the spindle, but this gives me room to maneuver. Follow? So now let me undo this clipper, get that one out of there, which I'm not quite sure how that's actually held in place that looks like all right hold on a little screwdriver maybe yep and get that out of the way and then once the strut's out I can see the back side of this and then take this retaining clip out without destroying it so if I try to take it out now I might destroy the locking tabs so now what we want to do is we want to take these large nuts off of here and same thing, we're going to clean these threads off, hit it with a little bit of lube, and then get those out. And now for this side, what we're going to do is we're going to put the half-inch drive on there, and that's a 22 millimeter, and we're going to crack it free. Sometimes the bolt will spin, sometimes it won't, depends on the vehicle. And this one is not spinning, luckily. Now, since this one will come out on its own right now, I'm going to take this one out before I loosen the other one. The reason being is sometimes they'll jam up inside between the two, and then you got to fight with them to get them apart. Because once this one loosens, the strut will move. There's some torque in that thing. There you see, actually, the bolt is turning. So, 22 millimeter on both sides. should come right out. Alright, so that's off of there. So now, basically you get the bolt out and the strut is ready to fall out. Let me back up a little bit with the camera. So, now this should just wiggle it a little bit, get it out, and make sure you're not catching the brake lines, don't hit the boot, and then the whole assembly comes out.
really wasn't terrible. I mean, think about it. Now, one thing you want to be mindful of too is, see the angle of the inner CV joint now? This isn't bad. On some vehicles, this thing can drop so much, it'll actually pull the tripod out of the inner axle. So you gotta be mindful of that. If you're doing this on jack stands on the ground, put something underneath the lower control arm, like a jack or something else, just to keep this thing from going down too far. Just be mindful of it. This style control arm that has a bushing going this way usually will not come down far enough for it to happen. If you have a bushing like this in the rear or the front, usually it won't. So just be something, just be mindful of that. So basically let's get the new struts ready and let's get it installed. Always compare your struts too. Make sure that your new strut matches your old strut. So I've seen people start to install a strut that looked the same at first, but it wasn't. So just compare everything, make sure it's right. And there's that piece that, um, that retainer for that ABS line. I'm gonna take that off and transfer it to this one. One thing too, when you're doing these quick struts, take this label off. I can't stand it when I see somebody put quick struts in, they left the label on there and just crushed it up in place. Also, that one has a gasket in between. It could be for noise um, problems, stuff like that. So if you have something like that, transfer it over. Don't leave it off. Just be mindful, pay attention to what you're doing. Also, this cap that covers the nut, transfer that over too. Let me get that done. On this one, it's just this little cap that comes off and you're gonna put it on here. Now, the reason you do this too, you may think, what's the point of it? The point of it is, with this facing up, like this, moisture, rainwater, whatever, will collect over time inside there and it'll pool up and rust the top of this thing out. So that's the reason for it. Because if you ever go to do struts again on it, or if you have to take it apart for whatever reason, and that thing's all rotted, you're gonna have a problem. Also, don't cheap out on struts. Don't go to eBay or Amazon. I love Amazon, I love eBay too. Don't go there and find the cheapest ones you can find. You will regret it. I, I'm telling you this, from personal experience, I did it on my own Dodge Caravan. I bought a set of, and not the cheapest ones, but I bought a set of cheapies, put it on there, and within a year, the springs were dead, dead. I had to do it all over again. So, and actually when I did it all over again, I wound up buying, because I had to buy new springs at that time. If I had I saved the old springs, I wouldn't have had a problem. But I had to buy new springs and new struts. I didn't buy complete struts that time. I just bought everything separately, and I bought all the high quality components and put in there. So, all right. Let's get, let's keep going. All right, so hopefully you're gonna be able to see this, yes. So now I'm gonna take the strut from underneath and I'm gonna put it up and through and try to catch it. Problem is the strut top rotates so easy on this one. And now I have the new nuts here. may not be able to catch them all. Yeah, Come on. So, oh, this one's fighting me. That's two this one's two absolutely fighting me. In your all right, there we go. I got it caught. So now, what you got to do is when you're doing that, let it hang and see how those two are not in. But now you can maneuver it and get those in place like that. So let me get everything caught, and then it's going to be reverse procedure to install. So now we're going to catch the strut. Now this is a very easy to move upper strut mount. I mean, that's like super easy. One of the easiest ones I've ever seen. So sometimes that could be a pain. So now you got to try to line this up and get this caught. Use a little persuasion there. You don't want to go crazy. What I may actually want to do is open the strut up a little bit. Let me open this up just a little bit. All right, so all I did there was I took my hammer and I was hitting it here and here. I was blocking the camera, that's why you didn't see it, but I was hitting it like this and like this on each of those ears just to spread it out a bit. So now, 
this thing should go in place. It can be a bit difficult. This one's going to fight me quite a bit, actually. As soon as you can get one, one of the holes caught, which I can see the bottom of that hole, What I'm going to do is take an alignment pen, stick it in there, and try to drag it through a bit. Right, so now that that one's caught, now we catch the top one. This one's actually one of the more difficult ones I've dealt with. There it goes. Must have been an edge on that or something. So there it goes. Now you got those caught. Now you're gonna put everything back on. And then that clip, there's that clip. What you do is those tabs right there, you depress those tabs and this thing comes right out. If I tried to pull this in there, I would have ripped those tabs off or deformed them enough to where this thing wouldn't have held. So now I can put this back in place. So like I always say, reverse procedure to install. Let's get this back together. Now one thing I wanted to show you, there's no adjustments in this strut, none. However, whenever I do something like this, I always push in on the top here and get it as far in as possible because that'll give it the most camber possible. So this way, oops, sorry about that. This way, when you tighten it up, it's locked in in that position. I mean, it's gotta go for alignment anyway, but it's just, this is something I do. Like my own van, I didn't even bother with an alignment, and I did the same exact thing, and it's been fine. It goes perfectly straight, and I haven't seen any tire wear. But when it's a customer's car, I always do an alignment, too. Uh, but yeah, I always do that just to get the most camber out of it. And like on some struts, you'll have an oblong hole, top or bottom, usually top. Uh, some of them will actually have a offset bolt. Like it looks like a crankshaft almost, and this way when you rotate the bolt, it changes the angle to give you to change your camber settings. So I just wanted to show you that. All right, so everything's going back together smooth. Really, no big deal. Uh, make sure you remember the orientation of your brake lines and ABS lines and stuff like that, so you don't wind up catching anything. Uh, but yeah, so let's get this finished and let's end this video. So there you go, all set, all done. I mean, that was pretty simple. All hand tools. I didn't use any power tools at all. Just basically showing you that you could do this in your driveway. You really can. It's not super difficult. Never, 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 never take this center nut off of the strut. That right there. There is a lot of spring load on this thing. So just be mindful of that. If you undo that, you need a spring compressor to hold this together. If you undo that nut and this thing comes flying out, it could, it could severely hurt you. It could kill you. So just something to be mindful of. All right, so hopefully you got something out of that. Uh, if you did, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. If you could, please tell your friends to subscribe too. I do appreciate it. You guys have been phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal, and I really do appreciate it. I'm on like a, I'm on a high, you know, mentally because you guys have been just awesome. So, all right, guys, you have a great day. Keep wrenching.